change of pace. It's been blow after blow for live export this year. First, there was a seven-week delay to Indonesian import permits, holding off until after the country's presidential election. Then, once trade resumed, 151 cattle mysteriously died on a ship from Darwin in March, triggering Indonesia to suspend that yard's trade. Let's bring in Mark Harvey Sutton, who's the CEO of the Australian Live Exporters Council. Mark, first up, I want your take on the Tracy Hayes spray the other night. Oh, well, unfortunately, I wasn't there, but I've heard a lot about it. And uh, I think Tracy's a wonderful advocate for our industry uh, and certainly the uh, class action that's uh, ongoing there. Uh, she's, she's just a genuine advocate and, and I think it was terrific and she's honest. Uh, and I think the federal government really should take note of uh, the message that came through there. Now, the Brahman Express, uh, has a cause been found for the deaths on board that ship yet? It's suspected botulism, uh, and that's still the case. Uh, I understand that sort of the, the final analyses are still ongoing to try and come up with a final determination, but at this stage we still think it was botulism. And, uh, you know, uh, while it was a, a terrible event, uh, that could have happened in the paddock or, or anywhere. It just so happened it was on the voyage uh, that those deaths occurred, which was a real shame. Now, has Indo, Indo resumed trade with that depot and when do you expect that all to be finalised? Uh, all to be determined yet, uh, but uh, Indonesia certainly uh, continues to be a great trading partner. They have that, suspend, that facility remains suspended, uh, but you know, we've seen volumes increase rapidly with Indonesia and they're, they're going up exponentially at the moment, which I think really symbolises how important the live cattle trade is to Indonesia uh, and also how important it is to our, uh, particularly Northern Australian producers. So uh, we've got Indonesian delegates here uh, from the lot feeding sector and we've been having good discussions with them. I believe Minister Watt's going to see them shortly. So I think the relationship's still strong. We have those challenges from time to time, but uh, we can work through it. Should vets be on board short-haul vessels? Look, this is a really interesting question. Uh, the science we have, given they're such short-haul and there, there are stock hands on board that are trained, uh, very much so, uh, in, we don't think they do need to be on those short-haul voyages. Long-haul voyages require a vet to be on them, uh, or if there's certain animals on a vessel, it's required to have a vet. Uh, so it, it's a bit of a challenging one. Uh, in one sense, this question arose because of that botulism issue. Uh, and as I said, I'm not sure what a vet would have been able to do in that scenario. It was just a really tragic circumstance. So uh, it's one of those things we keep working through and we do all our work based on science. So uh, we'll keep following that. Indo released permits for 650,000 head this year. Given the time lost and supply and all those movements, how many are you expecting to live export? Oh, look, I, we'd be generally pretty happy if we hit 500,000. That, that, that's what we aim for each year. Uh, and I think we might actually go ahead of that. Now, I'm not sure of the exact figures, but it has been an interesting uh, period because in this financial year, we've actually missed out on three months of trade with Indonesia uh, because of some challenges. Uh, but when, we, when it has been open, the volumes have just been significant, uh, which I think is just really important to mention because uh, Indonesia, like all our markets, food security is a really important thing. Uh, it also helps them with their development. And um, so I think it's just such a valued relationship. So I think the volumes are very good this year. Just lastly, live export, does it have an expiry date? No, absolutely not. I'm very positive about the industry and I don't think the live sheep industry has an expiry date either, to be honest, because uh, I think what's really concerning about that policy around shutting down live sheep is it's been a reformed industry. And the, and the rationale and the logic that's being applied to phase it out uh, gives other industries cold comfort because it's basically the adoption of an activist agenda. Uh, and so chemical use, the live cattle industry, uh, mulesing, all these other issues that we have in agriculture, uh, it's a thin edge of the wedge for those as well. So we just want our good policies based on science and evidence and recognition for the reform the industry has undertaken. Mark Harvey Sutton, thanks for your time today. Thank you for having me. Well, let's head back to the ring. Martin Bunyard is there. Marty, how are all the cattle looking? 